rotation, lateral bending, cervical seated on a human. So as an example for the lower cervical spine, we're going to go over both rotation and lateral bending of the lower cervical spine in the seated position. As we said with the demonstration uh, with the skeleton, if you choose to, to assess people with your hands turned down, it's okay we use these blue chairs. If you do, the object is to whatever height you have them at, to try to have the top of their head at or lower than your xiphoid. This will put your hands in essence in your wheelhouse, your power zone. Any higher than this, you're going to get away from the strength of your body. If for any reason, you, we, we, can, we can limit ourselves by a degree. I can have a tire slump down in the chair just a little bit. That'll lower her relative to me. But there's going to come a point where she'll basically slide off the end of the chair, in which case I'm going to be fighting her muscles just to show that. Point. In which case, we have these platforms here. This will be available also on the test as well in the center of the room. Now, this is your office. By all means, just take us on over here. We'll, we'll follow you. In this case, the platform, most people now can sit up fairly straight. Top of her head is below my xiphoid, so this is going to be a good position for me. I've established where C4 is. Our segmental contact point is, in this case, going to be the articular pillar. I've established that either by establishing the vertebral prominence or palpating inferiorly from the occipital. My segmental contact point for rotation, in this case left rotation, is going to be the articular pillar on the right-hand side. With both hands, I'm going to cradle the patient's head. I happen to be using my lateral index as the contact of my contact point of choice. You can use your fingertips. That's relative to you. With this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to assess the motion. I'm going to rotate Tara's head to the right-hand side, paying attention to what's happening in my right-hand side contact. As I rotate her, I feel pretension developing in my hand contact. To assess joint play, I can back off pretension a little, and then from there I can bring her back to pretension. What I should feel is the segment that I'm on slide anteriorly forward relative to the one below. It kind of makes a stair step. In Tara's case, it does, but not well. It almost feels a little bit of a muscular restriction. To assess end play, I bring her to pretension. Once she's at pretension, my indifferent hand, the backside hand, has done its job. Also, does it stabilize her head in that position? My lead hand is going to continue springing through the joint, P to A. The motion of your hand is kind of like driving the steering wheel of a bus this time. So I'm going to bring her to pretension. From here, I'm going to spring lightly through that joint, feeling the give and the recoil that takes place through it. In Tara's case, it feels like I have a muscular type of fixation. There is a giving quality, although it's not as resilient as I would anticipate. And the spring back, instead of a recoil, I get the kind of following me back as I let go of my pressure. And that's typical of a muscular fixation. So she has what I believe a muscular fixation, in this case of left rotation at the level C4. If we choose to do it, if you like your hands in an upward position, it be osteoporosis. Um, and Tara, I don't have a facial for this one. So we have our patient seated in a neutral position. If I choose to use it with my hands in an upward position, my indifferent hand for the most part is going to stabilize the top of Tara's head. I've already established this for example, we want to look at the level of C4. Your contact points, if you choose, can either be the articular pillar on the right hand side, in which case I'd be springing P to A relative to it. Or for left rotation, I could contact the left side of the spinous process. In this case, I could be pushing it from lateral to medial, in this case from left to right. Or if I choose, I can use a combination of both these simultaneously. It's kind of as if you're turning the top of a jar off. Uh, as we said there beforehand, just be on the test, you may be asked for either contact, what's your line of drive, or both. So just be ready to prepare. If you choose this contact, be prepared to answer both. For joint play and end play, I'm going to compress the overlying tissue, whether I push P to A here or I pull into the spinous process. I'm going to, for the most part, I'm going to compress the overlying tissue. With both hands now, I'm going to rotate Tara's head to the left until I feel pretension come into my contact. As we said beforehand, once we feel pretension, if you want to feel joint play, you could back off that pretension and then reestablish it, feeling for that anterior translation of the segment that you're on to glide over the one below. To assess end play, we bring the joint to pretension. Once at pretension, the indifferent hand just stabilizes. It doesn't do any further rotation. 
From now on, it's the doctor being able to get the body weight behind the contact and lightly continuing that rotation, that eighth of an inch springing, in this case, P to A on the articular pillar, pulling on the spinous process from lateral to medial, in this case from left to right, or a combination of both, feeling given resiliency.